Uh, my name is Ryan Dolly. I'm the director of technology at PM Square, and uh, as always, I'll be taking us through a, a Cognos-related topic today uh, to discuss on the live chat. So, um, once you go ahead and, and give me a hello in the chat, um, I can see a number of people there. Hello, Ketchum, uh, Patrick. Good to see you as always. Chris Lochel, eh. uh, Ravi. Hello, Jerry. Nice to see you again. Um, good to to see everybody. Uh, it's, um, you know, one of the best things about doing these, since I, I, I haven't left my house hardly at all in the last uh, 60 days, is, is seeing all the people who come regularly to our events. So um, I, I want to thank you for showing up today uh, and being a part of this. Go ahead and, and let me know in, in the chat if there's an audio or visual problem or something like that. But um, from my end, everything looks good. So I think we're, uh, we're, we're ready to get started here. I see the hellos rolling in. Um, okay, so um, the topic of today's chat, uh, if, if you've been to any of these in the past, you know, oftentimes we focus on Cognos features. We've done one on data modules. Every time a new version of Cognos comes out, uh, we do one focused on that new version. Um, but today's chat, what we're going to be talking about is actually kind of a, a proprietary piece of technology that PM Square has that is designed to take a framework manager model and convert it into a data module. Uh, and if you attended our 11.1.6 live stream, you saw some of this in action. I, I showed it, I think, for maybe five or seven minutes towards the end of the stream. Um, so do make sure to check out that stream if you get a chance. Uh, but today we're going to take a deeper dive and look at how does it work, what does it do, what doesn't it do, and maybe discuss uh, you know, how you can, can get involved with it and, and how we can help you uh, through that process of converting FM uh, to data modules. Um, so uh, with that said, a, a couple things that we want to to talk about um, ahead of time. So the first thing would be, as always, uh, this is this is a live stream. So I know a number of you have been here before and you've heard probably heard me say this five or six times, but for anybody new who who is used to going looking at you know, BI or analytics related webinars. Um, that's not what this is all about. This is a live stream and the way it is best, it's most fun for me, it's most fun for you, is if we're having a, a conversation, a lively conversation in the chat. And so as I'm talking or showing you things, feel free to react to what you're seeing, ask questions, provide feedback. I'll read your comments from the chat live uh, and, and then we can kind of discuss it as a community. That's really the goal of the live stream and why we switch to doing live streams and away from doing webinars. So, um, so, so please do uh, interact uh, as much as, as, as possible. I see we still have people rolling in here. So um, a few things to discuss. So announcements to make related to PM Square before I get into kind of the meat of today's presentation. The first one is going to be that we have coming up on Thursday, uh, May 21st. There's going to be, a, we're co-hosting with Modio a, 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 a Cognos Analytics migration virtual classroom. So this is us teaming up with Modio. Uh, if you, you may or may not know that PM Square and Modio were, uh, were very tight. Um, we, you know, we sell and consult the Modio products. Uh, we are friends with those guys. We sometimes share booths at IBM events. So. Um, we're, we've decided to come together to, to co-host this uh, Cognos Analytics Migration Virtual Classroom. Uh, that's really going to cover a lot of, I think, important topics that you're going to want to check out. So, um, you know, related to migrating Cognos, uh, giving you kind of a hands-on approach to speed up that migration, aligning your roadmap and your BI strategy, really important things as you look to maybe go from 10 to 11 if you still have to make that shift or or 11.0 to 11.1 and these are the types of things one of the reasons we were happy to participate in this with Modio is these are the types of things that we're talking to our customers about all the time um, how to get from your not not just technically move from 11.0 to 11.1 but in the course of that migration how do you start to take better advantage of the Cognos 11 feature set so that's a really exciting event I hope you're able to attend um, you can register, go to our, our website, you'll see it um, there under the events section of the website and feel free to register. Uh, and I will actually be doing an, an 11.1.6 
product demo as part of that. So, um, so do uh, attend. The other couple things that I wanted to mention, uh, our Genius Bar. So I, our last live stream was two weeks ago. I think it was right when we debuted this. But this is an ongoing thing that we have. So if you go to the PM Square website at pmsquare.com slash genius dash bar, you will see the dates that are available and the consultants that are available to meet with. So coming up, we've got Danny Gargas um, on May 19th, and then uh, Rob and Chris uh, will be the following weeks. Danny is a Cognos Analytics expert along with Chris, and then Rob really focuses on planning analytics. So all you have to do to sign up here is you click the Check Availability button, and you'll see it takes you to a Calendly page where you can uh, register your uh, interest in which time slot you'd like to take. Um, and then from there, it's really kind of a sales guy free, pressure free consultation about issues you may have or questions you may have related to these IBM Analytics products. So really encourage you to, um, to sign up for that and check it out. The final thing I wanted to mention is we have an ongoing Cognos Analytics live stream series uh, and we're going to continue doing content with that going forward. The feedback from you has been phenomenal uh, and, and we're really happy with how it's been going. And so what we wanted to do was add in a planning analytics uh, live stream into the mix. So starting in June, we're going to kick off a planning analytics live stream series that's going to cover the similar types of topics and have a similar style to our Cognos analytics live streams, uh, but we'll be focused on the planning analytics product instead. So I don't think we have a, an official date for that ironed out yet, but I want to encourage you to, uh, to keep, your, uh, your, keep your head up and, um, and look for that uh, because we're going to be announcing a date for that soon, and then that will kick off a similar series to what we have here. So looking at the chat, I see a lot of people have said hello. Again, hi, everybody. Um, if you haven't said hello yet and you've recently joined, go ahead and, and pop a hello down into the chat. And we'll get started on, on the topic of today's uh, today's meeting uh, or, or live stream. So the topic of today's live stream is all about, you've got framework manager, right? You've got data modules. What is it that you should be doing with them? Um, and so a couple of things I wanna, I wanna note before we dive into the nitty gritty of, of our automatic, automatic conversion utility. The first thing to know, and, and I hope I'm not the one breaking this news to you at this point, although um, it does seem like a lot of people t haven't totally heard yet, uh, is that Framework Manager is not going to receive any significant updates going forward. That does not mean it's being deprecated. It doesn't mean it's not being supported or that you won't be able to use it. I just had a call with the IBM product team yesterday where I point blank asked them, what are your plans for Framework Manager? And they reiterated to me that Framework Manager is uh, is going to be is going to continue to function for the foreseeable future. They have no plans to deprecate it. They have no plans to make it so that your FM packages and FM models stop working with the rest of Cognos. There's nothing like that on the horizon. But data modules are where all future development resources are going to be invested. And so what that means really is that the content you have that's running on Framework Manager that's working fine. Um, it's okay to stay there for, for potentially a long time, but data modules with each release are getting better and better and better and better. And at some point, you're gonna wanna start to take advantage of those features. Features like, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, um, what do they call it? The relative time feature, for example, or how easy it is to build custom tables. Uh, the fact that now, regardless of what data source you're using, you have direct access to the members uh, within uh, any data item in framework or in data modules, those types of things, you're not going to get on FM. And people often ask me, well, when am I going to get relative time in Framework Manager? Or you know, when am I going to get uh, a feature X or Y in Framework Manager? And the answer is you're not. The closest you're going to get to it, and this may be a topic uh, for a future live stream, it's, it's certainly a topic that I've covered a lot in my personal blog. You can always extract something from Framework Manager and put it into uh, a data set, pull that data set into a data module. You can even directly access uh, a, a data module in Framework Manager. 
and that or, or uh, the other way around sorry a, uh, a framework manager model in data modules but but you're never going to in the fr fm interface get the ability to just do the the out of the box relative time that you could do in data modules uh, now whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is uh, i'll leave it open to you to decide uh, but it, that's the reality uh, and so we need to start coming up with a plan for as data modules get further enhanced and and i i can't tell you I really can't get into the details, but I, I am aware of a number of extremely exciting enhancements coming to data modules over the upcoming releases. As that continues to happen, the, the pull to data modules is going to get stronger and stronger. And so then the question becomes, well, how do I get my content into data modules? I, I already have all these FM models, and they already have so much business value embedded in them, my calculations, my filters. Maybe I'm building tables with custom SQL and you want to understand, you know, you want to, you don't want to have to uh, rewrite that SQL because it's, it's not necessarily just a copy paste to make it work in data modules. Uh, the syntax that data modules are looking for in SQL is a little different than, than what you use in framework manager, for example. Um, and so, you know, coming up with a, a roadmap to get there uh, is, can be challenging when you have to do it all manually, when your only option is to go point by point, object by object through an FM model and analyze, okay, what is this FM model doing? What is this object doing? And how do I translate it to data modules? Because there's not a one-to-one -one mapping um, between the two. There really isn't. So not only are there some syntax differences when you're using SQL, but there's also just an overall structural difference. Data modules do not have a three-tiered structure like framework manager models do. Um, at least they shouldn't. You can kind of simulate one if you're if you are are insistent on shoehorning that that structure into a data module. But it's really not what they're designed for, and um, you're you're really not going to get what you were hoping for uh, if you if you go down that road. So. You really have to do a full analysis of your FM model to figure out what each piece of it is doing and how it is structured, and then how am I going to make that work in a in the world of data modules? Because it's not going to be a one-to-one -one translation. Um, Christopher, uh, to use an FM package in a data module, does the package need to be DQM? Um, I'm not 100% certain. I'll take a note and try to to do some research and, and maybe we'll post a little note on our blog with an answer to that, Chris. Um, but I'm not positive. I would just test right now, but in this environment that I'm, I'm looking at, every package is DQM. So it's not really gonna be uh, a representative test for us. But um, I will uh, take a look at um, uh, what we can do as far as that goes. So, um, and I suspect someone in the chat may know. That's one of the best things about these live streams is like, the intelligence of the people in the chat far outstrips my intelligence. I'm just the guy with the webcam. And so um, if anybody in the in the live stream knows the answer to that, feel feel free to uh, to um, punch it in there. OK, um, so what we really wanted to do at PM Square with with all of that said about the challenge of doing this migration is we realized that we have a really significant understanding of how to do this, how to think about framework manager models versus data modules structurally um, and how to how to you know how they're different what their strengths are uh, and we realized that if we made an automated process we could embed some of that intelligence into the automated process and that is what today's presentation is all about so uh, without uh, you know really talking your ear off here I'm going to go ahead and, and jump into this is an Amazon Web Services environment where what we are doing is um, uh, where we'll be processing this this conversion um, and so I wanted to show you give you some context for what we're going to be doing here um, if you look at the framework manager model so we've got the three tier structure here now this is not something we're going to do in data modules right um, the, uh, the because data modules don't really work that way you can't build a three layer structure where everything gets inherited um, from one to the other uh, to, um, you know, as your changes get inherited from one to the other in, in kind of the same way that you can here. 
there are ways you can get around that and and i have a blog post on blueview.com that you can check out that will talk about that but um, overall you know you're just you're not going to be able to set up the same type of thing and the reality is you shouldn't really want to honestly because um, it's really not a uh, the type of thing that uh, it takes a lot of time and if you look at it does have some advantages but if you look at say the way people are doing things in in tableau or power bi a big reason why people favor those tools is because um, they don't have to go through such an arduous process in order to just build a model now data modules do still allow give you a lot of functionality to build something robust as much as framework manager no but quite a bit um, and the flip side of it is you can make them much more quickly so if we look at some of the elements that we have in here um, there's quite a few of them and, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just run the converter and then we'll talk through uh, each object and show you exactly what it did so uh, in order to run the converter what I'm gonna do is I go ahead and this is a an app like a node.js application that we have um, so I can go ahead and look in this folder and you'll see I'll show you kind of how this works okay so um, so this is a the file that you're going to use to tell the conversion process what it is you want to convert and what you need to input into it is you tell it an input and output type so in this case you're going framework manager is the input type and data module is the output type now we have not tested this going the other way uh, in principle I wouldn't say it, it will work uh, but I think with some tinkering we could get it to work pretty easily um, so here you can see input and output type now you need to provide it the model XML of the model that you want to convert right that's what you see here and then for the output type you give it the CMID of an object uh, of a data module that exists in Cognos connection so if I pull this open in my team content um, let me log back in here what you'll see in my team content is here I have this data module target one model and it's empty right there's not so I feel like I'm doing a magic trick every time I do this we can all agree there's nothing in the data module um, it's just a totally empty data module nothing there and now if, if I go back to um, what you see here this is the CMID that represents that object and then I can provide a package filter if I want so if you have a gigantic model that's got um, you know 10 or 15 or I, I mean I've seen models with you know dozens of packages um, the best practice is probably not going to be to convert the entire model to uh, one data module but rather to split off each individual package into a separate data module uh, is is maybe the the better uh, road to go down um, or to do some combination of the two where you you know you these these 15 packages will make one data module out of but these five we're gonna make into independent data modules and that's kind of a you know an analysis type of thing that you have to do um, we include in here instructions on how to structure this and instructions on how to get the CMID um, if you're unsure of how to do that so this is you know we don't have we haven't put into place a beautiful user interface for this yet although that is something we we do intend to do we just kind of felt like it was valuable enough content um, that we you know we wanted to get it out there before we we made it extremely slick and that sort of thing like we trust you guys to understand how to how to do these types of things in order to get the CMID um, basically you go into the content store database and you run this SQL script right here so it's select CMID from CM obj, obj names where name equals and then the name of the object is how you get the CM uh, CM ID so it's not uh, you know it's not just click a couple buttons at this point um, although that's the direction we do intend to head but um, like I said the, the functionality seemed too valuable to us in order to uh, to just keep it locked up so um, you come in here you edit this file to put in the parameters you want again it's your uh, input type framework manager output type data module your input model your output the CMID of your output data module and then any package filter you want to apply 
once you do that um, it's just a matter of uh, running a, a command um, in uh, a note basically running the application so in this case it's a node.js application you run in come in here and you type um, uh, node index you run it and you'll get this message telling you um, you know telling you that uh, converting framework manager to data module one input found and it has converted model.xml to 10844 which is the CMID from our uh, our um, the data module that uh, that we were talking about earlier um, now from here uh, we're done right um, as far as this model is concerned so let me show you what this looks like now you do because the model is stored kind of in your session you do have to sign out of Cognos and sign back in to see these changes um, so if I sign out I sign back in and you can see if I go into team content and look in EMDM testing data module target here I have the the converted model and we can take a look at, at what these items are, but I, I really want to kind of dive into this and show you that this contains um, uh, everything, you know, data modulified. Of course, you know, we can't have a nice, uh, uh, we can't have a nice um, uh, diagram out of the box, right? Um, this is the data module structure equivalent of what we had in Framework Manager. So let's go through this and, and look at what that means. The first thing to look at is the product brand, product type, and sales target tables. These tables just come in one for one. Um, so if we go and look at this structure in Framework Manager, what you're going to see um, is that what we've done is we've gone through these packages. And again, we just combine two packages into a single data module. So in this model, we have package 6A and package, pa package 6B. They're two separate packages. Uh, but what we have here is a single data module that represents both of the packages. The next thing that you're going to see um, when we look at those tables is that what we've done is we've gone through the starting at the presentation view and we've looked at each individual item. So um, for something like uh, product brand, this is, uh, of course, a shortcut that is pointing to the product brand table here, right? The product brand, I should say query subject. Let's use our correct terminology the product brand query subject here. The product brand query subject here is then referencing product brand that you can see here. So one example that we have here is in, in the database view, product brand has no, you know, it's got the full blown, like all of the codes that you're familiar with from, um, from uh, uh, the go sales, right? We're, we're obviously doing this off of go sales because, um, you know, this is Cognos, that's what we do. Um, this has everything that you'd expect from, you know, from Go Sales, but in the uh, in the business view, we filter that out, right? And we're only having in the business view the uh, product brand code and product brand. Um, and you can see here in the data module that that's what we've included: product brand code and product brand. Uh, we haven't pulled everything in, so that's one example of the type of thing that we're able to do. Um, the next thing that we're, we're able to do, uh, if you look at, I suspect the, that the, the chat delay is pretty significant, and I apologize for that. I think that really contributed to the um, adventure we all just had together with screen resolution sizes, um, where I was reading what you were saying like on an extreme delay. Um, the next thing that we're going to see here is that uh, we have a, um, the retailer location table. Now, um, if I click on the retailer location table, what you'll see here, right, is here's retailer location. It's joined the sales target in sales. But if we, we know our, our Cognos 11 icons, um, this means it's a custom table, right? It's not a direct table taken from the, uh, the data server, right? It's a custom table. You can see the custom table here, retailer location. You can see the logic that goes into building retailer location. It's a combination of retailer site, retailer type, and retailer. Okay. If I look at the relationships, I can see 
retailer, retailer contact, retailer type, and retailer site. They're all here, okay? Here are those tables. They feed the retailer location table. This is the data module representation of something that looks like this in Framework Manager, right? The retailer tables. So here I have a folder called retailer tables in the in the database view. The folder called retailer tables contains these tables, right? Um, they are joined together in the database view. So what we've done here is we've come in, we've seen there's a retailer um, location table, right? The retailer location table, we trace it back to retailer location here. Retailer location here is still a link that is pointing to retail, retailer location in the database view. And retailer location in the database view is actually a query subject a composite query subject of these tables. So the best way to do this from a modeling perspective would be that retailer location should be in the business view, right? It should not be in the database view. But we're able to look at every individual object that is surfaced in a package and trace it all the way back through all of the views of your model to figure out how was this object constructed and then we translate that into the proper construction in a data module. So again, what does that look like in a data module? We condense everything down to one view. There are not multiple views in the data module. Um, and what we have in that case is we've got a custom table called retailer location that is based off of these tables. Now, one thing you'll note here is that um, the retailer contact is not part of this custom table, but we did pull it in. And why did we pull it in? It's because it's additional context, right? So the retailer location table really only contains items from retailer type, retailer, and retailer site. However, because it was joined and contained within that folder, we grabbed it anyway and put it in here. Of course, you're free to remove that after this conversion is done. So there's an example of another way that this has, this is beyond just a one-to-one -one conversion um, to get you into your, um, your uh, you know, to get you into your, um, to get you into data modules, right? It's, we're embedding our intelligence and going beyond simply a, a straightforward conversion in order to provide this type of stuff to you. Okay. Um, now you can also see a table here um, called product SQL, right? The product SQL table is a table defined by custom SQL in the, uh, the framework manager model. So if we look in the framework manager model, um, you'll see the uh, product SQL table. If I edit this, here you can see, right, my select from and where, all of my good stuff, right? So this is, and this contains a join in it. So, you know, it's not just a select star, like, oh, we can convert a select star. You've got your select from where we're joining product and product type, um, doing all this good stuff here where product language equals EN. So we've got an embedded filter in here. This is kind of a way to, to get around the fact that there's no fi join filters in data modules. We take this SQL, this starts here. Um, it goes up through the, the various layers of the module uh, or the model and is surfaced. And here you can see the same thing. And if you wanna look at what the SQL looks like, here you can see the SQL. So we strip out uh, things like the brackets around these items, right? And we automatically set the type in this case um, to pass through SQL. Uh, and so we've kind of refactored this to meet the data module syntax instead of the framework manager syntax. Okay, the next thing that we're going to take a look at here um, and, and I just I guess want to pause for a second. Imagine if, if you're one of those customers, and I have many, many, who have a ton of uh, SQL, just custom SQL defined in your framework manager model. And if you're trying to do this manually, you're going to have to basically cut and paste this SQL and then edit it, you know, one by one. Or you're going to have to write some kind of script to parse framework manager XMLs and pull it out and edit it for you. Um, but what we've done here is we've really enabled it uh, for you to go ahead and, uh, you know, it, it just does it for you is what it does. 
Now the final thing that we'll take a look at um, here is the sales table. The sales table uh, has is is another one of those custom tables. So you can see here um, under my custom tables sales. Sales is a combination of order header and order detail. Uh, and order header and order detail are um, SQL tables. So if I look in my data source tables here, and this is something we do, we take every table that uh, is publicly, every table that's a, a query subject that's a part of your, um, every, t every Nancy, I see your question there. I'll get to that in a second. Every table that is a, a part of your query subject, um, or, or that's, uh, let me put it this way. Uh, every query subject that's a part of your package is available here. So everything your end users would interact with, you see here. Anything that is a table that went into building those query subjects, so in our example, none of these tables, these retailer tables, none of them were made available to your end users in the framework manager package. What they were, uh, is they were hidden behind the scenes. And then there was a composite query subject that was made available to your end users. So we take every table that was not available to your end users in your package, and we hide it in this folder called data source tables. Um, so that you can simply come in here and uh, click the hide from users button, and now your end users won't see these. So um, We've already gone ahead uh, and done that for you, right? Um, it, so here you can see the order header and order details tables. And again, this is different syntax. So select star from go sales .order. Uh, In this case, we're, we've got native SQL. If I look at that in um, here, you will see that in order header, It selects star from bracket great outdoors sales bracket dot order header. So we automatically translate the syntax for you so that it works in data modules. Um, we can also pick up joins done at multiple layers. So if you look uh, in the business view here, what you're going to see um, is that there's also a uh, do, 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 database view. Where's my business view? There's also joins done in the business view. So we're able to do an analysis of the joins in the business view, the joins in the database view, figure out which ones we need to import and import those joins. Um, another example of, of the intelligence that we have built into this. John, I see you're asking, is it smart enough to figure out a SQL that uh, constructed um, uh, that leverages two data sources? Um, yeah, so it should uh, be able to do that. Um, we uh, we haven't ex I, I've tested that we've tested that in in some cases we haven't done super extensive testing, um, at, but in the cases we have done it has passed that. Um, would like to see more difficult FM for the DM conversion. Uh, it's a great solution, but the real world is not as uh, yeah as the great outdoors. <laughs> Agreed completely. Um, so. You know, we, we have tested this in some real world situations with customers. Um, I don't have the ability to share with you their their framework manager models. Um, it's not something their their customers are generally okay with. Uh, and so, you know, for this, um, we go ahead uh, and do that. Uh, Karan asks, does this work for CQM and DQM projects? And uh, what if an FM project has multiple packages? Yes, it works for CQM and DQM projects. Um, and uh, yes, it is able to handle multiple packages. So um, if you think back to the here, you, you, when you were filling out this specification, um, this is where you go ahead and put in, you can put in multiple packages. So in this case, if I were to put, you know, it, the, the model I was just doing had package A and package B, I could say only convert package A um, to model 10, uh, 10844. Basically, if I if I provide another one here, so if I were to go like, let's just pretend I had another model, and that other model was um, 9987, okay, uh, or another output uh, was 9987, and I could say, okay, I want you know, package A, comma, package B. 
right? Then what that's going to do is it's going to say take um, output 10844 and put package load package B into it. Take output 9987 and load uh, package B into it um, is how that works. Laura asks, uh, how are secured objects covered? So that I think that's a good transition to, well, what can't we do? And and what we can't do are is really the things that data modules can't do. So some important things that data modules can't do. Data modules cannot do um, object level security. Uh, and so um, we're not able to do within a data module object level security either. Um, data modules can't do things like uh, don't have prompts in a prompt UI built into them, for example. Um, and so, you know, you can't like you can't use uh, params and stuff in a, uh, a data module like you can in a package. Um, so if you have those types of things, uh, we have to do the, um, uh, you know, we, we run the conversion utility and then um, it, the conversion utility actually spits out and we're working on um, refactoring this, but I wanted to show you like a conversion log, not a beautiful one. Right, but you can see it's converting, you know, determinants. It's converting all sorts of stuff in here. Um, uh, we do an analysis of okay, what in your model may have been missed that, and, and it's not been missed because our conversion utility, um, because our conversion utility missed it, uh, but it's been missed because that functionality doesn't exist in data modules. So one of the things that we do when when our customers use this is um, we help you figure out okay, what about those things that don't easily translate into data modules? How can I handle that? And it's sometimes different for different customers, but we do have uh, some ways to help people do that. Um, okay, lots of good questions coming in now. Um, you can beta test for me. Yes, uh, happy to have people help beta test. How does it work with the alias function? So if you have a lot of aliases in FM, um, is there already a better solution to get the same functionality like FM within DM on alias usage? So um, what the way we handle that in data modules uh, is that we actually will, will do a conversion to um, the table type known as a, um, let's see if I can do new table and let's just grab product brand. Um, so the view of table is the way we handle aliases. So your alias query subject in framework manager becomes a view of table in data modules uh, when we when we do the conversion report dependencies that show you what reports are using fields tables no there's so there's nothing like that unfortunately in in data modules um, we've talked about so we have a product at pm square called thrive that can tell you provide um, data module to report level dependencies which reports, reference, which data modules. Very easy to get that information in Thrive. If you want to go down to the table or field level, we're not exposing that today in Thrive, although that's something we've been talking about. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, that's that's so it's not an option data modules. Now I will say IBM is aware that they really need that. So one of the reasons we haven't gone to the length of like fully developing that out in Thrive is because we know it's on IBM's roadmap in order to, to get that done. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, using calendars and data modules, that helps a lot um, for sure. John, it's not clear where I was running Node.js. I'm doing it on the Cognos server. Um, so I, I am running it on the Cognos server, but that's actually not a requirement. Um, what, what that does really is, um, it, uh, it, um, it can run anywhere, right? So you can install it anywhere. What you need to provide it to though, is you need to take your model XMLs and put it into the directory that the Node.js application is expecting. So that's like a, basically a copy paste exercise right now. You find your models, you copy them, you put them. Um, you actually put them in uh, the folder, this um, build folder, so you can see model XML right there. That's the, the model that I converted. Um, you paste them in here, and then the Node.js application is able to access it. And the way that it's putting it into the uh, Cognos right now is it's actually um, loading it into the co content store. 
um, the uh, you know what what we did um, is we basically uh, um, we figured out we we kind of reverse engineered the model spec uh, and then we we wrote a utility that's able to convert to the data module spec now of course you can see the data module spec now right but you could not see the data module spec back in the day uh, when we first started working on this so we had to reverse engineer it and what we do is we take the data module spec and we actually insert it into the proper location in the content store and then update all the fields in the content store necessary for Cognos to understand what and where that module is. So that's how we're doing it today. Um, we have a much better way to do it in the future that I don't, I, I'm not gonna divulge right now, but um, that should be coming uh, in, the, in the near term. Uh, that will just involve less SQL statements in your content store. Uh, Cause you know, that's not something we, we really wanna get in the business of doing all the time. Um, but uh, certainly we're able to. Okay, so um, is there a limit on the number of tables? So not that we've encountered so far, like 2,500 tables plus 2,500 shortcuts um, should be, and 12 to 13 packages, yes, it should be able to handle that load. Um, we're gonna, we have some tests lined up with customers um, where we're gonna be converting ob uh, models with 80 or 90,000 objects. Um, so we haven't, uh, gone through um, that exercise yet, but uh, we are, um, we'll be doing that. Um, okay. Uh, the view still needs manual work. Um, yes, that is the downside to, to the view is it doesn't totally eliminate manual work. In fact, I, I have an article on my blog, um, if you want to read about that, where I talk about alias shortcuts and, um, and custom tables and how, and like, what is the best one to use? And I really break down, I can show you guys this here. Um, let me find that. So if you take a look at um, this article on my blog, I really break down your different options. So what, you know, of course I explained what is an alias in Cognos because I'm writing for everybody, right? Um, alias and data modules, you can use a copy table, a view table, a linked table. And so really it, it depends on um, this. If the most important thing is automated inheritance of future changes, build a link table. Um, if the most important thing is reusing the same table and over and over, build a view table. Most of the time, do not build a copy table. That was really my recommendation for that. Um, so if you go to my blog, IBM Blueview, you can find that. If you just search um, I, data module alias, I, I, think I, I think I rank pretty well for that. Let's hope so. Oh, I don't, that's disappointing. Um, oh no, I'm the first one. Yeah, Google data mod module alias if you're interested in that. Okay. Um, the FM macro functionality. So we're in the middle of, um, of, of testing some of that. Um, things like, so things like parameter, uh, parameter maps, for example, um, the uh, the what we're doing um, you know you don't have parameter maps in data modules but Cognos Paul has kind of figured out a way to sort of do them uh, using some new um, uh, some kind of new functionality that's available in in uh, Cognos I can't I can't remember exactly what it is so I'm not gonna putz around and try to show you guys um, but you know we'll have Paul I'm sure Paul will explain that shortly um, so that's the type of thing that we uh, we're not converting that yet, but we're working on that. Um, and then macro, the macro functionality as well. Um, so if you're trying to define a dynamic table name based on a report prompt, that's probably not going to work because of, of the lack of, um, uh, well, actually, let me think about that. We haven't tested that. Um, we'll, we'll try to test that scenario and let you know if, if that works. So what, what other questions do you have about this? And, and overall, what is your feedback? Uh, that's what I'm most curious about. Is, is this something you think you would use, something you would need? There are a couple other things I didn't highlight here. The retailer location table has a filter applied to it. So we're able to capture things like table filters. We're able to capture calculations. We're able to capture filter objects and translate those into data modules. So all of that stuff uh, comes over as well. Um, as far as new options changing with the new release, no, no, nothing has changed with the new releases of Cognos when it comes to uh, can, do, can you really have an alias table? 
the query value. Thank you, Paul. So if you use query value, query value will allow you to kind of get the get at the parameter map functionality. So we haven't written a script that converts your parameter maps into query value, but there's nothing precluding us from doing that. As far as the macros are concerned, um, I think some of them are going to work OK and some of them might be more challenging. So we're, we're taking it on a case by case basis. So uh, again, your feedback would be extremely welcome. Just thumbs up, thumbs down. Is this good? Is this bad? Um, now, I know there was a, a question from Nancy saying, OK, this is great, but how much does it cost? What is the pricing? So here's the pricing on this right now. Um, the way that we're we're currently selling this is as a uh, a basically a consulting engagement. So you would engage with us and say, hey, I would like to convert these data modules or these framework manager models to data modules. We would have a meeting where you would, you know, we would poke around the models a little bit. We don't even have to do that. You can just send us the XML, really. Um, but we would take a look at the XML, look at the object counts, stuff like that, and then provide you with uh, an estimate uh, for how long that we think it would convert. So what we're typically seeing is, as you guys can see here, uh, you know, manually replicating this model probably would have taken me an hour, uh, it, you know, maybe a, lo a little longer to get everything right. Um, and the conversion process took two seconds. So what we're talking about typically is we're talking about taking a process that would take you hundreds of hours uh, to accomplish. And the SOW we provide you is, you know, a week or two um, in order to do it. So that's how we're doing this right now. If you are interested in, in purchasing this as a product, we're totally open to having that conversation with you. So the way we have been doing this, we haven't been really actively marketing it yet, but that's changing today. This is officially becoming a, an offering that we've had. So we've really only been working on this with a few of our, our close partners. Um, and the way we've been, been doing it is, is as that consulting engagement. Um, again, if you are interested in, in purchasing this, Happy to have that conversation. Uh, just get a hold of us, and we'll do that. Um, and if you are a uh, an IBM Analytics partner, if you're a Cognos partner in the UK, in the Netherlands, in Germany, uh, in Denmark, and this is the type of thing that you would be interested in utilizing, please reach out to me. We are looking for international resellers and partners for our custom solutions. Um, so that would be this. That would be the, the our Thrive product, which I've mentioned a couple times on here. And we have a couple more Cognos extension products in the pipeline that are pretty exciting. So um, if you're if you're in you know Europe or um, uh, Asia Pac, uh, please uh, reach out to us. It uh, pr please reach out to us and um, and we'll have a conversation about what a partnership might look like. Uh, I'm I'm very interested to uh, to have those conversations with you okay john asked what about namespaces in fm so for example if a package has two or more namespaces in the presentation layer would this come over intact maybe in the form of folders i do think um i do think that's what it's doing today i'm not 100 percent positive um, so i'll have to take a look how does it handle namespaces that's the one thing i can't remember off the top of my head um, so we'll take a look at that what other questions uh, do you have? OK, um, which languages are taken if the model has four languages? Um, that's a good question as well. Uh, which language does it take when the model has multiple language? Um, one of the things we haven't done a, a whole lot of development on that because we know that IBM is looking at adding multilingual support into this, into data modules. And so anything that we know is maybe on the near to medium term roadmap for data modules, we sometimes hold off on developing a full blown solution ourselves because um, it can be very challenging to kind of do this mapping between these two solutions. And if IBM is going to be coming out with multilingual support for data modules in three or six months, you know, it's, it's probably best for us just to wait on that. So um, uh, I will take a look at what language it takes. I'm not positive which one it takes off the top of my head. Um, 
If you can create DMs from selected query subjects, like what you do when creating a package, that could be more useful because large data modules can be detrimental for explorations or AI insights. Absolutely. So if you do an exploration or insight, what I would actually recommend that you do is that you take the items that you want to 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 do uh, use the AI um, use the, the explore feature on or the AI assistant on, uh, and you export them into a data set. Um, the AI assistant may, maybe not always, but for for explore in particular, I just I have a much better experience when I export them into data sets, um, and so uh, it, that's really the the way to um, to do it in my esteem is to pick a couple target measures and then pick a good healthy bucket of um, attributes that describe that and throw that into a data set and use that. So that can help relieve some of, of what you're talking about. Now the ability to choose individual query subjects to convert rather than converting at, at the package level is something we've discussed. It's just not something that we, we have available at this time. Okay, um, so does that answer everybody's questions? And, and are there other things that, that you might wanna know about this? And again, um, what's behind data module? Yeah, it's JSON. You can actually see the spec. So if you go, um, I think it's this, there you go. Here's the spec. So if you go control um, slash Q, it will pull up the data module specification for you. So here you can see, here's our data module spec. Um, and this is all something, This, the ability to look at this spec wasn't in Cognos when we first figured all this out. So we had to like really dig deep to, to get this. Um, but you can see the data module spec and you can even edit them. So if I hit the edit here, I actually can edit the specification. Um, so that, that's one thing that uh, you'll find helpful. So if you go to uh, our website and you look at under the solutions, you'll see FM to DM converter. And that will walk through, um, kind of discuss a little bit about what it is and, and why you might be interested in it. Provide a link to this video and then give you the ability to uh, schedule a conversation with us uh, to, to talk about this. Okay, um, so if there aren't any additional questions, I'll, I'll give you guys one last chance to get it in, um, and then uh, I'll, I'll start wrapping up. So um, I want to thank you uh, again uh, for uh, for coming to this. It's really, um, you know, we I think we had a really good conversation today. I hope that what you saw today was interesting and and something you you might want to have further conversations about. And if it is, reach out to us. Go to the website, uh, take a look at what we have on the website for the Framework Manager to Data Module Converter. You can contact, contact us from, from there. Um, we're happy to assist. Uh, for those of you who, who may be, um, we're also happy to do, uh, look for, to, to, to do some tests, right? So if you do engage with us and you are interested in this, um, we can take one of your XMLs, do a trial run on it and see how it'll do. Um, so it's not like something you have to commit to pay for before you've even, you know, before you're even convinced it works. Well, we'll absolutely, if you're interested in it, do a trial run of it, um, convert one of your models or one of your packages so you can see how it works and see how it's going to handle your model. That's the most important piece because we recognize that to the point that someone made earlier, you know, doing it on go sales is one thing, but the real world is a totally different thing. Um, and so if you're feeling some degree of skepticism here, happy to, uh, to meet that skepticism and show you how it works on your model. Just reach out and talk to us um, and, and, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, and with that said, um, how much is Thrive, Nancy? Uh, so Nancy, Thrive is, um, the list price on, on Thrive is 15,000 US dollars a year. Um, and then that is the form of a, a subscription and it's deployable on-prem or on cloud. Um, and so 
that's that's kind of yeah that's how thrive is priced if you're interested in thrive reach out to us you can reach out to um, me directly r dolly at pmsquare.com and i'm happy to, to give you a demo um, and discuss what licensing might look like for you uh, so um, you know uh, reach out to us uh, and let us know um, and then uh, with that said thank you everyone and um, we really appreciate it again pmsquare.com check us out check out the framework manager to data module utility if you're interested in it reach out to me happy to do a trial run with you to prove to you how it works um, and uh, yeah everybody stay safe and healthy out there and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks for another pm square live stream